1. I used to work as retail staff in the attractions industry a couple years back when I was a teen. This particular story happened when I was working in the gift shop one evening. A little context. Working in the attractions industry, it wasn't uncommon to stumble upon items guests left behind every so often. You'd be surprised at the amount of people who would dump their things all over the place to snap a picture only to get distracted, end up leaving their belongings behind, and come running back in panic when they realize their items are missing. When this happens, our staff brings the item up to the gift shop, since it's one of the first points of contact, and it is where we have the most surveillance cameras. Our standard protocol is to fill out a form description of the item, what time we found it, where we found it, etc. Store the item in a discreet drawer directly inside of a surveillance camera, and when the owner comes to collect it, we have to verify that the item actually belongs to them. I.e. if it is a bag, we'd unzip the bag and ask them to describe the items inside, etc. Ask them to sign the form before releasing it. I was warned we had incidents in the past where random people would come by and try to claim items that weren't theirs, hence the hassle. This particular night, I was working the closing shift by myself. Earlier in the day, a co-worker of mine had dropped off a backpack at the gift shop counter and marked it as a lost and found item. Now keep in mind that I had only started two weeks ago at the time, so I followed the company's protocol to the T. I filled out the form and tucked it safely away in the drawer and went about my day. Later in the evening, a woman, crazy wife, came up frantically to the counter asking if we happened to find her lost backpack in the attraction. We had only found one backpack that day, so I assumed it was hers. I proceeded with the protocol, unzipped the bag, and the following conversation ensues. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to have to verify that this bag is yours before I release the item to you, okay? Yes! I unzip the bag. Could you describe the contents in your bag to me? Um, uh -huh. there's a towel, an umbrella. Wait, I have my wallet in there. You can look for it in the bag and I can show you my ID. I start searching for the wallet. Have you found it? This is when Crazy Husband enters the picture. All hell breaks loose. Sees me searching in the bag and immediately starts screaming at me. What the hell is she doing? I look up in shock. What the hell are you doing? Get your hands off my bag right now! I lift my hands up, surrender style, and walk backwards away from the bag. Crazy husband violently snatches the bag off the counter. What do you think you are doing? Going through my bag! I start to panic and call for my co-worker from another department. Crazy Husband walks toward another end of the store with the bag, cursing and shouting towards the rest of his family, children included. She was going through my fucking bag! She could have taken something! Trails off. My co-worker arrives, concerned. Is everything okay? I never ask for help unless I needed it urgently. I explain everything to him and was still completely in shock. Don't worry, you did everything according to protocol, you... Crazy Husband storms back with another bag in his hand and starts screaming at my co-worker. She was going through my bag. I could have seven million dollars in that bag and she could have stolen it. Sir, calm down. Crazy Husband holds a new bag. It was obviously very heavy, seeing that the bottom of the canvas bag dipped and was weighed down by whatever was in it. Why don't you go through this bag too? Literally hurls the heavy-ass bag at me. Now is probably a good time to tell you that I am a tiny, even by Asian standards, girl. I was probably 17 at the time, 4 foot 11 tall and 99 pounds at most. The freaking heavy bag landed on my arm, which is weaker as I had broken it before, that I had resting on the table. That hurt. I snapped my arm back to my body and clutched it in pain. I knelt down and started having a full-blown panic attack. I couldn't breathe and couldn't stop crying. The co-worker watched in horror and immediately started to comms for our manager, who promptly rushed to the scene. Co-worker explained everything to the manager as quickly as possible and consoled me. I could have had seven million dollars in that bag and she could have stolen it all! The manager turns. You do not harass my staff! I don't exactly remember what happened next because I was having a horrible panic attack, but I remember hearing the following phrases. Don't you dare f touch me! What are you going to do? Slap me? I dare you to. Call the effing police, etc. I was escorted to the bathroom by another manager to calm down, and when I came back out, Crazy Wife and Crazy Husband took their phones out and started recording us, our faces, and name tags, yelling about how they were going to post this on the internet. 
The police arrived shortly after, and Crazy Husband went mental and pointed at me. That, sir, that is a girl who could have stolen my money from me. She was going through my bag without permission. I did have permission, by the way. Okay. I could have had seven million dollars in my bag and she could have stolen it. How did she have your bag in the first place? Well, we lost it earlier in the day, but that's besides the point. We could have millions and she could have stolen it. Well, do you have seven million dollars in that bag? Well, no, but... Please come this way, sir. The officers separated Crazy Husband and Crazy Wife from my manager and started interviewing them separately. They asked to review our CCTV footage and the officers concluded that Crazy Husband probably had anger issues and just lost his damned mind. The officers asked him to leave the premises immediately and led them off with a stern warning. They went out hollering about how they were going to sue us and complain to corporate, and they never did. Their nice daughter eventually came up to the counter with her kids and a stuffed teddy bear, asked if she could purchase it for her children and apologize for her parents' behavior. I smiled, said it was okay, and checked her purchase out. It was time to close the shop at that point, and I followed my duties as per usual, pretty shaken from the whole ordeal. It completely baffles me that Crazy Wife was the one who insisted I get her wallet out to verify the bag was hers, but did a complete 180 when her husband started accusing me. Immediately stood by his side and didn't bother to mention she was the one who asked me to reach into the bag in the first place. Well, I hope she's not being abused by this psychopath, not to mention his grandkids were around to witness all of this too. To this day, I'm so incredibly appreciative of that nice manager who stood up for me. More often than not, the employee gets blamed for a customer acting insane, but this time around, she and co-worker was my hero and practically saved me from this horror story. I went on to work for the company for another year before leaving. I still see nice manager occasionally. She got promoted and I couldn't be happier for her. Oh, and I never got into any trouble for that evening, so I guess that's a win. 2. So this only happened a couple of hours ago at around 9pm. I had a crazy craving for Brax conversation hearts. You know, the little candy hearts that taste like chalk, that nobody seems to like, but I'm that weirdo who does. After having visited four stores, I had almost given up, until I made my last-ditch effort, which was to go to Walmart, since I hate going to that store. I did have some other shopping to do, but unless I had the hearts in my hand, I wasn't going to grab a cart. I managed to find a guy who actually worked there, and he was really nice and showed me where the hearts were. I grabbed five bags since I'm a sugar fiend and head off to grab a cart. After grabbing a cart, I'm grabbing some stuff like you naturally do in Walmart. Prior to leaving, my mother had asked me to get her some cookies, so I am by the bakery, taking pictures of them and sending them off. When I grab whatever items I am going to buy, I always grab the item from the bottom of the back. Because in my mind, I always think that not as many people have messed with it. While I'm at it, I do try to make the table the cookies were on look a bit nicer for the next person. I walk over to my cart, which was right next to where the butter was, this Walmart is really weird and small, and was looking at my phone and jotting off what I still needed here. No less than five seconds do I hear a very loud, EXCUSE ME! Now I had not looked up because I had foolishly thought it had nothing to do with me. When I heard it again, I began to feel a little frightened, but still kept my head down and pretended to be an ostrich. The third time what followed that banshee cry was a forced shove of my cart into my gut. Here's the following exchange. Finally, you look up. I need help finding something, and if you didn't look down at your phone so much, maybe you'd actually do your job. Look, I don't work here, lady. I literally said that to her. Yes, you do. Don't lie. I- I cut her off by this point. Look, I'm wearing pictures of two disco balls, and each of them are on my tits. Do you see any other employee who has disco tits? Do you? While I was saying this, I pulled my jackets back so you couldn't see that I indeed have disco balls on my tits. Well, you were just stocking that table there. Why else would you clean it up? Maybe I did that because I'm a decent person. By this time, the cool employee who had helped me find my candy walked up and asked what was going on. And before I could, she had told him how lazy I was and should be fired. He told her again that I did not work there, 
and after hearing this, she had swung her hand as if to knock down all the butter on the shelf, but instead hit her hand on the actual metal shelf. Her cries of pain were so loud it nearly shattered my eardrums. I stepped back and so did the employee. We were both afraid to do anything. This had caused quite the commotion, and other shoppers were looking. She clutched her hand and stooped over all while saying, She did this to me! The security guard who had been at the front of the store came over and did not have an ounce of sympathy for her. He told her that since she was disruptive to the other shoppers and she had purposefully tried to destroy merchandise, she could either leave willingly or he could physically escort her out. While she was walking out, she began calling all three of us every name in the book and kept screaming to have me fired along with calling corporate. I was apologized to and offered a discount, which was nice, but I declined. I was just so happy that this experience was over, and it had felt like a bad dream. I went home, got into bed, and typed this out while eating my candy. For those curious what the shirt looks like, there is a link in the original post. 3. So a little bit of background. I was diagnosed with a severe form of anxiety disorder when I was 10. A lot of things can trigger an anxiety attack, particularly someone yelling at me without warning. I've managed to get a bit of control over my anxiety over the years with meds, but I still have attacks from time to time. Now on to the story. I work at a small mom-and-pop grocery store in my hometown, one of the very few in my area. There are a lot of small towns around us, but this is pretty much the only store. I was working alongside my other co-worker, who we'll call AP, for Amazing Person. We were the only employees there because this store is understaffed. AP was running the cash register while I was taking care of small tasks I do every day. Take out the trash, sweep, etc. I had just started to bring out a cart I stacked with crates of milk to restock the cooler when I ran into EOB, entitled Old Brat. She was short and fat, like a human beach ball, with thinning white hair and what seemed to be a permanent scowl. EOB seemed nice at first. All she was there for was a large rack of ribs that had been advertised as on sale in that week's ad. I go to the meat cooler to help her look and see nothing. Not even a spot where they could have been. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. Sometimes our store managers forget to take out something from the ad that we don't carry, but a sister location in another state does. I try to explain to the EOB that we might not carry what she is looking for, but she doesn't want to hear it. Her sweet attitude dropped to reveal her true nature, and it's not a pretty one. We'll just go get another employee, she huffed, clearly annoyed with me. I go to do that, not wanting her to be upset, but I turn around just to make sure I didn't miss it or something, it happens a lot. But as soon as I start to look again, EOB starts to yell right in my ear, just go get someone already! I came all the way from hell just for this, and I don't want it to be a waste of my precious time! I backed away quickly with a quiet, Yes, ma'am, before walking away. At this point I'm shaking, trying to keep it together. I had about an hour left of my shift, and I didn't want to spend it bawling in front of the entire store again. I make my way up front to AP, who is checking out a line of about three people. I tap her shoulder and explain what was going on. She could see I was shaken and trying to keep it together, so she went to deal with the EOB while I took her place. Apparently, everyone in line could hear EOB's yelling and helped me calm down, telling me it was alright, and their own experience with people like that. These people were regulars, so they knew about my disorder. By the time AP was back up front, I was laughing with the customers and back to my normal self. AP, on the other hand, looked ticked, and it takes a lot to make AP ticked. As soon as the line was empty, she explained that we did not have the ribs EOB was looking for, and this wasn't the first time she caused issues. This lady usually came in looking for discounts, complaining about customer service, and lack of items we didn't have that she wanted. Hardly anyone liked her, and AP even told me EOB would even go to funerals of people she didn't know just to get a free meal. Talk about cheap and messed up. After a bit, EOB finally gets up to the register with only a bag of plain potato chips. She pays for them and leaves with a huff, not saying a single word to AP or I. 
AP and I were relieved. We didn't want to deal with any more drama that day. 4. So I actually did work at the Target this story took place in, but I wasn't working that day. And I didn't work in the food section and wasn't too familiar with it because I usually buy groceries from May Lucky's down the street. I lived next to the Target in question, so I shopped there a lot. And this day in particular, there was a convention downtown that me and my friends had attended in costume. We were heading home after the convention when we decided to have a spontaneous movie night. So we stopped at the store to get some soda and snacks for the movie. I was dressed like the Scarlet Spider, if you don't know, it's like a Spider-Man with no black lines and a blue hoodie, and a big spider logo. My friend was dressed as a traditional Spider-Man, and the friend that got caught up in all of this was dressed as a Miles Morales Spider-Man from Spider-Verse. That last bit is the most important, because at the time the movie wasn't out yet, but one of the trailers showed Miles wearing shorts, shoes, a hoodie, and a jacket over the hoodie, over the black Spider-Man outfit. My friend dressed up in the whole getup. Going forward, I'll refer to my friends as who they dressed as. So before we got to the target, we all took off our masks, because of course we weren't going to go inside a store in a group in masks. It was going to be trouble. Me and Miles had morph suits, so we tucked the mask under our jackets. But my friend took off the bigger jacket and left on the red hoodie. I think he left on the hoodie because he looked ridiculous with a mask dangling from his neck but also the jacket was zipped up. The story becomes a bit predictable from here. Miles went an aisle further than me and Peter to grab a case of Dr. Pepper while Peter and I picked out the chips. What happened to Miles is a short woman asked for his help grabbing a sparkling water case, and so he helped her and made a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man joke that fell flat. I overheard that bit while I went to him to make sure he was okay with the chips Peter and I picked and some lady who saw Miles help the other woman and was asking why there wasn't any organic pears. I pitched in that he doesn't work here, so she turns to me and asks the same question. Then asks why I'm not wearing a name tag. I try to explain how I had the day off and I don't know the produce section at all. Before I can tell her that I'll go get someone, she gets mad at me and says she's going to complain to the manager that we were wasting her time and how we were making excuses for slacking off. A few minutes later, the manager walks out, and the lady was really thinking we were going to get in trouble. I wish someone was recording it, because apparently she was fuming because of the way the events were described. She was told there were two workers who looked like they were stoned, lying to customers and slacking off. I did not see her angry, because she only looked confused and partially amused when she turned into the aisle to see three Spider-Men arguing over what dip for the chips to get. After explaining what actually happened, the manager laughed at the absurd idea that two guys dressed in Spider-Man costumes were confused for being dressed as a Target employee. Needless to say, I didn't get in trouble. Word spread among my co-workers, and my personal favorite bit is that I now have a nickname around work. Spider-Man. 5. So I work for a corporate grocery store. I've been promoted from bagger to cashier, to self-checkout clerk, yes, that's the thing, to the customer service desk, and I'm currently being trained to be a supervisor, and they pay the same. But this story takes place on the second day I was SCO. At this point, I had been left alone for a little bit while the person training me went on a break. I was still a little nervous, as I had never been left alone here before but what made it worse was the coupon lady. I had no idea who she was at this point, but she had brought two carts full of groceries to the self-checkout area. She got mad because it kept asking her to put items back that she was taking off, and by the time she brought out her coupon, she was pretty ticked. I gave her the normal hi, how are you today spiel, and proceeded to scan the coupons. I finished scanning the coupons, and as I'm walking away, this conversation happened. All right, have a good day, ma'am. Wait a minute, what about my coupons? Your coupons? I need them back. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm not allowed to give back coupons after they've been scanned. It's company policy. Well, every time I've come in before, I've always gotten them back. I'm not sure why that is, ma'am, but we're not allowed to give them back. 
I had to tell her this, I think, three times before she finally gave up and paid for her stuff and left. After she had left, however, one of the supervisors that was on the floor came up to me and told me to reprint the receipt and dig out the coupons she used. I got confused for a second, but did as I was told. Come to find out this lady is in often and buys groceries with coupons that don't even match the items. I helped look over the purchase to see that at least half of the items she bought didn't match her coupons. The next time she came in, she had brought someone else with her, and they had their fair share of items as well. When the time came for their coupons to be scanned, I took them and looked through all of them, double-checking her items to see if they matched. This prompted this conversation. What do you think you're doing? I'm checking your coupons to make sure they match your items. It's a new policy. It wasn't. But you can't do that. It's an infringement on my privacy. Well, I have to make sure, ma'am. By the way, these coupons won't work. They're for the wrong size. After a bit of fussing, she took her coupons back and the transaction went smoothly. I did the same thing with the person that was with her and they both left the store. She came back a handful of times, each time with less and less coupons and items. This made me kind of happy, as well as the fact that every time she came in and I was there, she'd sigh and get real unhappy. You could tell at this point she didn't like me. One of the last times she'd come in, and I was at SCO, she called my supervisor after she left to complain about me. I don't remember the whole conversation, as it was my supervisor who told me about it. But the gist was that I was way too thorough and didn't comply with her needs. Her needs being, I don't know. I wish I could say nothing really changed, but I can't. Recently, she came in and bought only a small amount of groceries. She had around six coupons with her, and after she paid and started walking out, I told her to have a nice day. She turned around very quickly and told me this. I don't think I will, because every time I come in here, it's always you I'm stuck with and you are by far the worst employee on the planet Earth. You know why? Because you are rude to me. Not true. You discriminate against me. She is an older white female and I'm white as hell. And are against all my coupons. That was the only part that is true. If I don't see you again, it will be too soon. I think she also said that she hated me somewhere in that yelling rat, but I can't be sure. Now every time she comes in and I'm not at SCO, I try to go where she is just to tick her off. Brightens up my day every time to see her flustered and upset. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hell for this. Hey everybody, Hellfreeza here. Ah, crap, I'm stuck doing a voice again. Ah, whatever, let's just go with it, okay? Tell your mother I said hi. Okay, number 50. And thank you... Just a sec. <laughs> That's better. Okay. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. There we are. Terrible sorry about that. Oh, can I just say, was it st story number two, was it number three? I can't remember exactly which one. Uh, the one about the person who always takes things from the back and the bottom. I do that too. I can't, it's almost a compulsion, I can't help it. It's like I don't want the ones that half the public is touched. I'm trying to get better with it. I still do it. But I always I used to kind of root around in the back, and I thought that's just ridiculous. You're being silly. So now I do I do reach in. I just kind of grab whatever comes first, as long as it's not from the front. It's a thing of mine, but I'm getting better with it. it really depends on my overall mood. To be honest with you, I find when I'm more stressed, I tend to obsess over that kind of thing more. Ah, well, doesn't matter. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.